Candida. Oh my goodness. This is a topic, a really hot topic with a lot of people that I speak to. And they're always like, you know what, Melissa, I have no idea how to get rid of this. Because trust me, I understand. So whether you got vaginal issues like yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, digestive issues, like constipation or diarrhea, and so much more, I'm here to give you the goods today on SFT TV. I'm thrilled to be able to talk about it today. And we're going to be talking about a lot of connections that you might not even have placed together. So my question is, are you ready? If so, let's do this. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Melissa coming at you here from Toronto. Uh, just adjusting that. Can you see my little puppy in the back? Right, right, that way. <laughs> it's so hard because everything is backwards. Anyways, if you don't know who I am, my name is Melissa Ramos. I am the owner, the boss babe of Sexy Food Therapy. And I love to work with women and help them with their hormones and their digestion. In fact, I've even been called the poop whisperer. So anyways, I want to chat with you guys today about a really important topic that I get asked about a lot, and that is candida. I'm just gonna switch back to over here. There we go. <laughs> Always trying to do like no glitches, no glitches today. Anyways, huge hot topic that I normally get asked about quite a bit, and that is candida. And honestly, a lot of people are super confused about it. They wonder about, well, how do I know if I even have it? What is it? And they'll go into a health food store and then they'll buy these box kits and they think, I'm gonna like, you know, really bust my candida. But the problem is, is that a lot of these box kits, as frankly, as far as I'm concerned, are enough to actually detox a hamster. Yeah, we're gonna go there. <laughs> So listen, today I want to talk to you about what you actually need to know about this. So number one, uh, I want to be able to say hello to a bunch of people. So hey, Kelsey and Shakina and Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Uh, Nina, Renu. Um, I love it. Yes, I'm ready. And Diane. So I'm seeing quite a few uh, familiar faces, which is awesome. I always love that. Um, if you feel that you have any issues with candida, please let me know if you have grappled with it in the past. And uh, if you have no idea if you even have it please let me know because there's a lot of confusion around that as well. In fact, probably a little bit more than I actually had thought about. Uh, hey, Pamela, how's it going? Uh, so here's a couple of things. Let's break down exactly what it is. So number one, we actually all have it. It's just a matter of is there an unregulated growth of it in our system to the point that it's just causing pure mayhem. And I'm going to give you sort of the East meets West uh, viewpoint about candida. So, um, from a Chinese medical perspective, they don't ever say candida. They'll say uh, the term dampness. Now, this isn't exactly um, completely synonymous to candida, but definitely uh, close enough for this discussion for sure. So here are some of the symptoms that you're sort of looking at when it comes to candida. Number one, if you've got a thick coating on the tongue, especially on the proximal root of the tongue, and that means at the very back. So check out your tongue and take a look at that. And also, not only just that, but if, if it's white or if it's yellow, um, Chinese medicine uh, will also say that there's probably a lot of dampness happening. And when we look at the proximal root of the tongue, we're looking at more of the digestive system, even down to the reproductive system. So any ladies here with um, estrogen-related conditions like fibroids, PCOS, uh, ovarian cysts, any of those at all. If you do have any of those conditions, please drop it down like it's hot below. Oh, hello from Puerto Rico. How cool. Um, all right. Uh, Heather says, uh, yes, I have it and I'll be part of your detox in July. That's awesome. So happy to hear that. Um, and also, guys, do me a favor. If you don't mind, if you could share this uh, broadcast right now, that would be freaking awesome to the interwebs, just because a lot of people need to know about this stuff. So if you've got friends or family, even tag your friends, that would be super great, even if you're watching the replay. So um, as we're talking, t uh, thick, 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 thick um, coating in the back of the tongue, even it could be like all over the tongue. If, if that is, then there's quite a bit going on digestive wise, because the tongue's coating is very much a reflection of what's going on in the entire body. 
So take a look at your tongue. Always. Um, if you've got a tongue that has the teeth marks on the sides, because your tongue is a bit swollen, so it pushes up against the teeth. If you've got a tongue that has those teeth marks on the side, you're also looking at dampness, according to Chinese medicine. Now you might be like, you know, hey, I don't really like understand what dampness or candida means. So let me just break this down to you. So if you, for example, um, I always give this analogy, so bear with me if you've heard it before. So if you have, just think of your digestive system like gears in an engine, okay? It's chucking away, it's doing its thing. All of a sudden you put crappy food in there, okay? And you're super stressed and you're obsessed and you're worrying a lot and, you know, stress, because stress actually can impact the di your digestive function because there's this nerve that travels from the brain and the, the digestive system called the vagus nerve. And so stress can definitely impair your digestive system. Um, so processed foods, uh, major allergenic foods as well. So some of the, the really big ones like gluten and dairy are huge. Um, definitely should be avoided. If you're drinking a lot, alcohol breaks down to sugar. So um, that also is going to slow down those gears eventually. It doesn't mean you should never have wine, uh, but it just means to kind of moderate a bit. Uh, all those things start to slow down the digestive system. So it slows down those gears. And eventually what ends up happening is gunk, and I know this is not a technical word, builds up. And you can kind of look at this gunk as synonymous to candida. And it really uh, begins in the, the gut because it's an unregulated overgrowth of candida. And over time, if you don't learn your lesson from some of the symptoms you're having or don't recognize it, for example, it can end up growing and growing and growing and growing. And you start to see it manifest systemically in the body. And that could be from systemic inflammation. Uh, we can see uh, toenail fungus as well. That can happen. All these things begin to happen. Um, okay, so, and thank you for all those folks who shared it. Charlene, thank you very much for sharing this uh, this um, broadcast. Talene says, I know a guy who has it on the back of his tongue. Does he have that? So these are all just symptoms of dampness. So dampness is just when the, the digestive system um, really has slowed down to the point that its functions are very slow. They're very stagnated. There might be constipation. There might be diarrhea. Um, you know, there'd be tons of bloating. So these are all big symptoms of candida or dampness, I should say. And I like to say dampness very much because of the fact that I feel it has a bit of more of a broader scope to it in terms of how they actually define it. Um, and thank you for all the thumbs up. If you guys are digging this, please give thumbs ups and hearts. I love that. Uh, so Stephanie's a PCOS, uh, PCOS are here. Uh, you know, when I first read that, Stephanie, I thought you were saying poser. PCOS, -er. I got it. <laughs> um, Sherry, thank you, Kelsey. What time of the, the, what about the tongue with raw spots? I'd have to know a little bit more about what you mean by raw spots. Um, usually if there's like raw spots, I can do an entire, I probably actually, if you guys would love me to do an entire live stream on tongue diagnosis, I totally can because it's a really fascinating topic. Uh, PCOS, insulin resistant IBS says uh, Jonah Lee. Um, Christine says, I had my doctor about the bite marks on the tongue, side of the tongue, and they said that they had no idea. Yeah, so Chinese medicine looks at the tongue, they look at the pulse. Um, there's many other ways to be able to uh, look at somebody and diagnose them in Chinese medicine. So it's, it's a really, really, really fascinating uh, topic. So those are definitely um, some of the ways that you can actually understand some of the symptoms if you have it. One of the big ones for women is vaginal issues. So yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis. And I know, I know, you go to your doctor and they're like, you have bacterial vaginosis. And they say, you got BV. It's like anything, anything, any doctor that says anything with an acronym will scare the piss out of you. Totally get it. Totally get it. So, but these are really rampant things. And BV is actually more common than a yeast infection. But they're so highly stigmatized. And we're so scared to talk about it, which is so unfortunate because we should speak about it. And those are really big. So if you are getting those consistently, then those are also signs of dampness. If you are getting consistent UTIs even, those are signs of damp heat in Chinese medicine. So they will end up giving you a set of herbs to be able to treat that. Um, even some acupuncture that will help with that. 
But there's many things that you can do from a nutrition perspective as well um, that will help to address a lot of those symptoms. So it's really important to understand that even um, perpetual bad breath, you just can't get rid of it. Um, all that is coming up from the digestive system uh, as well. So really, really, really um, important to understand all those symptoms, how they wrap up with um, candida slash dampness, because I'm going to kind of put those two in the same category uh, as well. So really, really, really big ones. And I want to be able to sort of uh, kind of give you the lowdown in terms of why proper liver function is so freaking key in this whole game. The whole game. Because people don't think that it is important, but it is. So if you are detoxing this candida and you're like, Hell yeah, I went to the health food store, I've got some supplements in me, I'm eating, mm -mm. I've got my shit figured out. When that candida is trying to leave your body, you have to understand that you have a bunch of elimination channels. You've got your kidneys, you've got your, um, you know, your large intestine helps to move out the poop. Uh, you've got your liver, liver is a big one, it has over 560 functions. That's crazy. You've got your skin's an elimination organ. So there's so many different elimination organs you have. So if you were trying to detox out candida constantly and it ain't going anywhere because you haven't worked on the liver, good luck. So all I've got to say is good luck on that because you have to make sure that your digestive organs and the liver as a part of your digestion is working. And that's the reason, that's one of the biggest things I see that are missed consistently. Now just a side note, I have this little dog here and every once in a blue moon when I'm on a live stream or a call, he will go bananas and start to bark. So just throwing that out there, just in case he does, y'all are just going to be like, it's all right, Melissa, I got your back. You can take care of your little psycho puppy. Um, <laughs> chronic armpit odor definitely is another big one. Uh, Catherine says, lately when I order Dim Avail, it says heat sensitive and needs to be expedited shipping with ice. Is this true? Okay, so we're not going to be talking about that right now because we're talking about candida. Okay, so we need to stay on topic. Um, liver function is huge. If you're not actually, uh, your liver is not detoxing efficiently, um, there's going to be a really big problem with this. And so a lot of people, and I definitely am going to do an entire uh, episode on the MTHFR gene mutation. Um, I will give us a, a short synopsis here for those of you guys who don't know, but roughly 40 to 50% of the population actually has this gene mutation. 40 to 50%. That's huge. Now you might be like, well, I don't even understand what this gene does. Um, what it does is that if it, if you have the mutation, you're unable to detox efficiently. And there are several variants of uh, this gene mutation that a lot of people have. And the problem is, is that when uh, people have it, and a lot of people have it, they begin to methylate poorly because your liver goes through this methylation process. So you actually methylate poorly. So your detox, your detoxing, um, um, your ability to detox is impaired. It's just not very efficient, I should say. So Things like green leafy vegetables are incredibly important, asparagus, all the greens. And the reason why, you know, when your mom says, you got to start eating your greens, she was right. And I say this because of the fact that they're so rich in folate, because you don't want to be taking folic acid if you have this gene mutation. And there's a lot of, that's why you don't go buying your supplements at Costco, because you can buy shitty B complex and it ain't doing anything for you. So there's a lot of really great brands out there. Uh, Thorn definitely makes one called Methyl Guard. Uh, Pure Encapsulation makes a methyl a methylated B complex. Um, AOR I believe has some methylated B vitamins in theirs as well. And this just allows you to be able to do these detoxification processes easier. What the hell does this have to do with Candida? Let me tell you. So the reason why that this has to do with candida is because if you actually have an overgrowth of candida and say, for example, you don't have this gene mutation, you can actually further impair your methylation process just by having candida. So if you are somebody who were like, mm -hmm, check and mark all the shiz, all those symptoms I talked about in the top, the, the tongue coating, the bloating, the constipation, the, the vaginal issues, the UTIs, all that stuff, 
you actually could be impairing your methylation function whether you do or whether you do not have that gene mutation. That's kind of a big deal. Um, so really, really important to make sure that we're working on our liver and then definitely working on our candida thereafter. Some practitioners will work on both at the same time. I like to be super laser focused when I work on various protocols with people. Um, and it's the reason why that I ended up doing uh, the liver and candida detox. I actually did a free masterclass uh, that happened on um, Tuesday, so two days ago, and it went really, really, really well. And the replay is over, so you can't catch the replay, but I want to be able to do this sort of recap with you guys here for a lot of you guys who didn't catch that masterclass. So at least some of the info that I shared in that uh, masterclass, you're getting sort of um, a synopsis, the Coles notes of it, shall we say. And I really want to talk about candida because it's a really big issue. So in the springtime is the time that you want to detox your liver. And that's the reason why my liver and candida detox uh, has launched. And um, I want to make sure that you guys know that um, I'm actually going to put the link up here. Put this over here. Um, I have no idea why I just did that. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. It went and then it faded. <laughs> so dramatic. Um, but anyway, so this link, I'm just letting you guys heads up right now because the price is $197 right now and it's going to end up going up as of 11 p.m. tonight. So tonight really is your last chance to get in on this before the price goes up and you never get that price again. So at any rate, I want to be able to say that it's super important to make sure that your liver function is working adequately. Um, for multiple reasons, obviously because of the detoxing and to make sure that you've got, you know, to know um, that chances are, I would always say, get methylated B vitamins uh, because you may, you may not have the gene mutation, uh, but either way, you want to make sure that you're uh, actually detoxing efficiently. The other thing that I found, um, oh, I'm just going to answer some questions. I have the uh, MTHFR gene, need to know what to do. Yes, yeah, so methylated B vitamins, Nicole, is what you'd want to do. Uh, a bunch of y'all have it. Um, so the way that you can find out, there's a lot of testing. Um, 23andMe uh, does it as well. Um, oh, they'll not test for MTHFR. Okay, well, I thought they did. This might be a, a recent change. Um, but truthfully, it's interesting because even when I do a hormone panel with somebody, I can see if they're not methylating properly. There's actually a, a meter. So if the methylation is really low, for me, I automatically will assume that they have the gene mutation. And I just assume because I'm like, well, I'm just going to give them methylated B vitamins anyways because their methylation is so poor. So why why don't you when pretty much 50% of the population has it? Um, Nicole, you have to look at the raw gene data. Probably easier to go through it if you don't want to do an ND. Yeah, you can go through an ND. Um, I definitely can get um, the MTHFR. I'd have to look at the labs that I work with um, and then definitely just go from there. Um, okay, so the other thing that I want to be able to bring up that I thought was super freaking cool, so check this out. So for all of you women out there who have PCOS, fibroids, um, heavy bleeding, uh, you know, estrogen-related type PMS symptoms where you're like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I just feel like angry and like you want to snap on somebody. Let me tell you, estrogen, believe it or not, can actually support the unregulated growth of candida. I don't know about you, but that is a pretty astounding fact. So estrogen can support the unregulated growth of candida. That's bananas. And candida, actual, actual candida overgrowth, encourages estrogen dominance. So it's like, they're, it's, 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 it's just shitting on each other. <laughs> Such a bad piece of words, but it is. So estrogen can promote the unregulated growth of candida. Candida overgrowth encourages estrogen dominance. What the F is going on? So I don't know about you, but I think that that is absolutely crazy pants when I actually heard about that. So there's something to be said about really understanding that if you have uh, any sort of estrogen related type symptoms like that I had mentioned or like, you know, uh, PCOS, fibroids, et cetera, et cetera. And you've got some candida buildup. 
I always say that it's a good, it's, <laughs> It's a good idea to be able to work on your digestive system. Even if there's like sinus issues, you know sinus issues, every time I, I hear about that, I always remind people that in Chinese medicine, all your digestive meridians run through your face. So you have to make sure that to understand that all of these symptoms really begin in the gut. Like really, 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 really begin in the gut. So addressing that is important. And the reason why that I created a liver and candida detox is because in the spring, the liver is most receptive. So in Chinese medicine, every single season, there is an organ um, that is associated to that season. So in spring, it's the liver. And then there's summer, which is like uh, the heart. And then there's late summer. So that like August time frame, And that's when we start to see um, issues that end up happening with dampness. Um, really, really, really prevalent in the late summer. So I always suggest people, I'm like, start to really work on your liver now. A lot of people, practitioners will put um, patients on uh, detoxes in the winter, like in the dead of winter, like December, January. And, uh, you, you know, you can do it. Go on with your badass self. But when your body is literally saying, and, uh, oh, can no, you second you here? Can I'm literally. Do it. <laughs> is literally I don't know what I am doubling up there but I'm just gonna make sure that doesn't happen um, anyways so when you are literally doing that you are actually fighting against yourself because your body is trying to go oh, I'm trying to detox I'm trying to eliminate so it's pushing outwards but in the winter time your body's like I just want to like stay warm and I'm holding everything and I'm contracting that's a time when you do stews and you do crock pots and stuff like that but you shouldn't be detoxing detoxing is not a winter sport so um it's the reason why i have a lot of respect for my colleague uh, julie daniluk because she created a book called the hot detox which makes sense so you can totally do that sort of um type of food in that period of time it makes absolute sense how do we go about testing with you um okay so let me actually tell you about some of the tests um i always say that the dutch the my hormone panel that i offer uh, in in practice is the best um, that you can actually um, do because of the fact that you might not see if which gene variants uh, gene mutation variant you actually have but I can get a good understanding if you are actually methylating low and so the Dutch test would be one thing that I, I would strongly suggest a lot of people uh, are really huge on the spit test for candida lots of people they're like the spit test it's you know that's the way that you test for candida no offense, it's pure baloney. And the reason why that I say that it's pure baloney is because of the fact um, is because of the fact that you are essentially spitting into a cup, and you're going, oh well, if it's thick, then I've got candida. But that's not taking into account a lot of things. There's a lot of variables that are associated with that. So there could be bacteria. There's bacteria. Well, there is bacteria in your mouth. Um, mucous membranes in your mouth produce mucus. You might have the flu. You might be dehydrated. Um, the spit test really is just a crude measurement of how thick your saliva is. And that is variable. Like every single day, that will be very different. Versus, you know, if you step on a scale, for example, like, yeah, your weight might fluctuate a couple of pounds, um, but it's not going to go, okay, you're 135 pounds and now you're 150 or 170. If that's what it did, you would just throw out the scale. It's the same thing with the spit test. So a lot of people are like, oh, the spit test for candida is accurate. No, it's actually not accurate. Um, I don't feel it is. It's not something I suggest. I generally go based on symptoms with candida. However, you certainly can go to someone who works with blood, like uh, a naturopathic doctor, and they can do um, an antibody test, a candida antibody test, which is a, they measure for Ig. Uh, a, IgM, and IgG are the antibodies that they use. So that's actually way more accurate to be able to find out. But quite often in practice, I go based on symptoms. If I see a lot of symptoms that are indicating candida, I kind of look at it like, mm, don't really waste your money. Let's just sort of attack this the way that we feel is fit. Um, and that to me makes the most sense. Uh, so just putting it out there. Okay, guys, just putting it out there. Because a lot of people are like, how do I go testing? I personally would just suggest, uh, you know, symptoms. Colette says, livewellow.com. 
or mthfrsupport.com can take the raw data um, from 23andMe, which will show the MTHFR gene. That's great, actually, um, news to actually report. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Celeste says, I missed your masterclass regarding the cleanse. It was hoping for a replay, but never saw one. Is there a replay? There isn't a re There was a replay, uh, but the replay actually had finished at the end of uh, Wednesday. So the replay hasn't uh, went out, but it has already expired. However, um, with that said, I'm just going to slap this into the comments box. So this tonight. And then the price goes up. Okay, so I just want to throw that into the chat box there real uh, quick. Okay, um, my I was keeping an eye out for the masterclass replay as well. I signed up but caught in meetings last minute and didn't make it. Was it posted and not emailed? It totally was emailed. Um, sometimes what happens is, is that servers will block the email. Um, so my I know that you are seeing me personally for sessions. Um, so just send me an email and um, we can figure something out uh, for that. Um, don't sweat it. So those are sort of the big things um, that I want to be able to really chat about when it comes to this. And I want to be able to tell you a little bit about supplements real darn quick uh, because it is kind of important. So here, glass of water, pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. If you are not hydrating, you cannot detox. Like plain and simple, you need to hydrate. And I know that sounds really simple, but I do wanna say one of the things that I do suggest is adding a little bit of fiber. So some psyllium, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, psyllium, if you are chronically constipated, I always suggest to people to make sure that they start real slow with any fiber because all of our digestive systems are so different. So it can make you feel super bloated and very uncomfortable. Um, usually what I do is I suggest food grade, and I can't say this strongly enough, food grade, diatomaceous earth. Um, I find that it's a bit less constipating um, than bentonite clay, which is what I have here in my hand. But because I have it in my hand and for the purpose of this demonstration, I will use this. So I'm literally gonna pour a tablespoon of this into my water, which you can't see, but I will show you, okay? I'm fine with bentonite clay. It's obviously like a desiccant. So there's just bentonite clay in here, okay? It literally is like a desiccant. It dries it up. Remember, dampness is wet. It's got more of a wet property, so you want to make sure that you dry things out. This is when you add the psyllium. I would suggest about a half a teaspoon. I clearly have a tablespoon in my hand, but just a half a teaspoon to start. Again, work your way up slowly to a teaspoon. If you can't get to a teaspoon because you're feeling too much digestive discomfort, don't sweat it. So you got that? Putting that in here and then mixing it as quickly as possible because it will congeal and taste like shit. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and drink as fast as you can. Ugh. Those college drinking days clearly paid off. Ugh. All right. So that's what I would do. Think about doing any fiber. It's really, really important to understand. You got to be taking. Um, you got to be taking it about half an hour either before a meal, and I would probably even dare to say like forty-five minutes to an hour before a meal, or two hours after. And the reason why before a meal, supplements, uh, medications, because fiber binds. And so anything that you put in your system, especially medications or like especially medications, you want them to work. You don't want them to slowly release into your body. You want them to work because that's what they're prescribed for. Supplements, the same thing. Food, it just can kind of create a lot of digestive distress with it because you're chugging down a whole thing of water. But you have to make sure you're drinking two liters of water a day. If you are not drinking two liters of water a day, you will get constipated. Just throwing that out there. You will not be able to shit. So gotta let you know that for sure. The other thing obviously is a 
damn good probiotic. You guys all know that I'm a huge fan of Natron's healthy, healthy start system. Um, you know, we did the, the challenge uh, for uh, prior to delivering Kenzie to detox, which by the way, is up in the comments. If you guys want to join, remember 11 PM tonight, uh, it's the price is going to go up. So make sure that you get on it. Anyways, um, in the challenge, I was giving people Natron's healthy start system. And uh, I'll actually just grab the box real quickly so you can see. And so I was giving this to people and people were having detox reactions. It's 6 billion per live cell. And I say that only because it's a pure indicator of quality versus quantity. So I've seen professional lines that are like 80 billion, 100 billion per live cell. And they're like, oh, we're the best. Sure. Take these guys and you will feel the difference. Hands freaking down. So I just definitely want to put that out there that it's really, really, really important to understand that quality does matter when it comes to taking probiotics. Um, Celeste says, I have Hashi's adrenal dysfunction, hormone imbalances, SIBO, Candida, EBV, um, and probably the MTHFR gene mutation. Is it still good to start the Candida and liver cleanse, right? It is. And truthfully, the reason why that I say that it is is because in Chinese medicine, the liver and the thyroid are very much closely interlinked. And Hashimoto's also is, is a condition that is an autoimmune condition, as I'm sure that you're aware of. And because it's an autoimmune condition, what ends up happening is, is that that all actually begins in the gut. And when it begins in the gut, what happens is there's a leaky gut that begins to happen. You begin to develop antibodies and it starts to attack the thyroid gland. So any sort of thyroid condition, spe specifically Hashimoto's, like any, honestly, any autoimmune condition, you really got to look at the gut. So a lot of the stuff that you're actually saying is gut, 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 gut. And this program is very, very, very much gut related. So definitely want to be able to throw that out to you guys, uh, hands down, because it's super, super, super important. From a food perspective, if you are like a carb queen, anybody here are just like, I just, just shove my face with a bunch of carbs. Anybody here love their carbs? And I'm talking like, you know, you're having too much. Like, you know, you know, let me know if that is you. Um, if you are a big carb fanatic, if you are drinking more than four servings of alcohol per week, drop it like it's hot below. Uh, I'd love to be able to know if that is sort of a struggle for you, because I'll tell you right now that being a sugar addict, all of that is truly going to be a huge detriment to your digestive system. It's going to slow it down. Like we were talking about dampness. Uh, Mariah says guilty. Kim says bad carb girl. Lori says me. Chips are my weakness, says Mandy. Um, so, and I will say this, when you are consuming all those foods, you're literally creating dampness in your body. Um, and over a period of time, if your body is consistently getting this quick hit of what turns into sugar in the body, people a long time ago said that glucose was, or have been saying for a while that glucose is the preferred uh, brain fuel. It's not. Fat is. It's a very old, outdated belief. And I know that a lot of dietitians are still saying this. It's completely false. Um, I should do a whole episode on that too. But uh, I will say this, guys, that it's really, really important to be able to lower down the amount of carbohydrates you're actually having. Replace those with more nutrient-dense foods like, you know, greens and vegetables. Um, it's a huge pet peeve of mine when I see keto diets and people are like, I'm going on keto because everyone's going on keto. And I'm not saying keto is bad. I'm just saying that the majority of people who are eating keto these days, it's like bacon upon beef upon bacon upon beef upon cheese upon a, a whole dessert filled with whipped cream and like stop the freaking madness. You don't need to be eating that way. Like I get the whole role of high fat, low carb, which is different than keto, by the way, because there's more flexibility with it. Um, and I personally don't label myself at all the way that I label myself as human. I'm human. You're human. Let's stop the fucking labeling, please. Because of the fact that I look at it and go, you know what? For the most part, I eat a very plant-based diet. Meat is my condiment. I love to introduce lots of fat into my diet. But if there's ever a day every now and then where I'm like, mm, I just want a grain bowl. I fucking eat it. And I'm not going to feel guilty for it. There might be a time where I'm going to go with my husband. 
I might have some wine. I'm not going to feel guilty for it. The balance thing is really important. So if your balance is completely out of whack, that's something to be questioned because there could be an overgrowth of candida because when you try to take it away, the body's like, don't take it away. I just want some more sugar. I get it. I get it. So we just have to reset your body, which is why I developed the liver and candida detox to do that. So just again, guys, know that that is uh, incredibly important to do a reset. Um, okay. I have hypothyroid. Didn't know it was related to the liver. Yeah. So the Chinese medicine, there is a connection to liver and thyroid. So, um, especially, uh, goiters, um, because when you swallow, you'll feel that. And in Chinese medicine, that a lot of the times they'll relate what's called the plum pit chi, uh, to that, to the goiter. It's a little bit more of an extreme version of it, uh, because you can get plum pit chi if you are, um, you know, feeling, sad and you try to swallow and you have that lump in your throat that definitely is a plum pit chi it feels like you got a plum pit in your throat uh but a goiter is more of an extreme uh example of that uh yeah that was my whole diet chocolate um that's me says diana if i don't eat carbs i feel hungry how do i get rid of that feeling the problem is that you're eating carbs you're probably not eating you're not balancing your blood sugar properly so then you remove the carbs and then you might be someone who's like well, I ate a salad and some chicken, but that's not going to keep you full. A, there's no fiber in that. There's not enough fat in just the salad dressing. Um, and the chicken probably doesn't have enough fat also to satiate you. So number one, I would say making sure that you have higher fat. Um, that's going to be a huge one. And also question, are you hydrated? If you're dehydrated, you're going to want to eat everybody and their cousins. Okay. Mold in my home is a big root cause for me. Um, I'm hoping you're removing your mold. And I also would suggest taking some lipos, uh, liposomal vitamin C because it's a massive mold killer. Coffee. Yeah, coffee is awesome. I'm, my family is uh, part Brazilian and uh, we love coffee. But it's a matter of like, do you have the balance of it all wrong? Are you grinding your teeth like crazy? Because if you're grinding your teeth like crazy, Chances are that you're drinking coffee that's deplete and it's depleting your magnesium, which by the way is a mineral that also helps to detoxify the liver. Um, you know, magnesium is your muscle relaxing mineral. So if you're wearing your shoulders as earrings, if you can't poo, um, all those things are happening. And 70 to, they're estimating even up to 90% of the population um, are actually deficient in magnesium, your muscle relaxing mineral. So Les, thank you so much, Melissa. I just love you and appreciate all you do. I look up to you and I'm constantly recommending you to everyone. I got ahead of early, but wanted to let you know that you're great. Thank you so much, Les. I hope you can join me with the Liver and Candida Detox. We are have so many people uh, who joined. Uh, Diana says she has endometriosis. Would this detox help me? Yes. And the reason why, and I'm glad you brought that up, because endofibroids, PCOS, I'm naming all the estrogen related, even like breast cysts as well. Um, so fibrocystic breasts, all those different types of conditions. If your liver is congested and if you factor in that 90 million Americans, and I'm pretty sure Canadians are not too far off, but 90 million Americans have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, 90 million. That's huge. Um, so if your liver actually needs work, which guaranteed if you have endo, your liver needs work because your liver is also responsible for helping to conjugate those excess estrogens. If it's not doing that efficiently, then you are just getting this estrogen being recirculated back into the system and to try to go through it again. And then all of a sudden it builds up. So really, really, really important. The other thing that is uh, helpful to know is that if there's an overgrowth of candida in the small intestines, understand that the small intestines ends up dumping a bunch of junk. So you can have all that candida overgrowth. It can dump all that junk through the hepatic, uh, the hepatic portal vein and it goes right to the liver. And then the liver is like, whoa, girl, you throwing down some more toxicity into me again? Yeah, because your small intestine needs work. And anybody that I know that has hormonal issues and guys have been doing this for like well over a decade, uh, PCOS, endo, fibroids, all of them, I always make sure that their diet is hypoallergenic uh, as much as possible. I mean, there's some exceptions. Sometimes eggs are in there, but if you react, we can find alternatives. Um, 
that the liver is being supportive, but even the women in my sexy lady balls program, which is a hormonal membership program, they all literally pause their protocol, their supplement protocol and do the liver and candida detox every year. I do the liver and candida detox every year. And the reason why that I do it every single year is because I have been on morphine at least five times in my life. I've been on Dilaudid, which is, the, is seven times the potency of morphine and is banned in Europe. Um, I was on that when I had my, um, um, my uh, surgery, my life-saving surgery, when I had a cyst that ruptured and tore off a piece of my right ovary and I, they had to take out over three liters of blood. So those are sort of like kind of big things when you've been on a lot of prescription medications. If you've been on birth control, antibiotics, um, antibiotics gets thrown out like candy, thrown around, I should like candy, uh, birth control pill, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, um, all those things really mess up the liver because it has to actually filter it. It's an elimination organ. And so when you're on all those things, the more that it can't work efficiently, the harder it's going to have a really hard time detoxing out those hormones. And if it doesn't do that, you are going to be left with estrogen related conditions. If you are constipated because you got candida and you're not moving out that poo, where do you think the estrogen's hiding out? It hides out in your fat and it goes to your poo when it's ready to be dumped out. But if you're not pooing properly, mm -mm, that shit's getting, no pun intended, is actually getting reabsorbed in the system. Super important to understand. I have adenomyosis, same thing. That is an estrogen related condition. Definitely same thing still applies. Uh, my, I've stopped caffeine for six months now and take magnesium, but my dentist still says I clench or grind my teeth. Um, there still could be some adrenal stress that's going on. I still would get a bite plate in the meantime to be able to address that. Uh, PCOS is a lease. Does your cleanse deal with liver flukes and parasites? Well, you have to understand that parasites actually feed off of candida. So that's another thing to actually bring up is that some people are like, well, you know, I'm on, I'm getting a, an, an, an anti-parasitic um, product. But if you have candida, what the hell do you think parasites feed off of? They also feed off of iron too, by the way. So that also could be an underbelly root cause of iron deficiencies that just are not resolving itself. So does it help? Absolutely, because you have to do the, the, the grunt work a little bit before. Uh, I know this is a two month cleanse, but I would imagine that it might take longer for some people to fully detox. How do we know that we've detoxed enough and how long is long? I think that that is a great question, uh, Josie. And you're right. There are people who will do the, 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 the detox. It's a two month protocol. Um, you have it for life there. Um, and it, it's a, you know, it's, this is the first time actually we opened up a temporary two month Facebook page for the group. Uh, which is amazing, but you can start it at any time. There's no official start date, but you know, some people may have to do the candida protocol longer. And that's the reason why that I have that private group that is going to be opening up starting on Monday. doesn't mean everything is starting on Monday. It just means we're letting people in on Monday and then come, uh, the beginning of July is when we're, that's when I'm going to be in there engaging a little bit more, answering some questions and it'll be open for uh, two months, but the actual material of the program you'll have. So at least I can be able to counsel you if you're like, hey, yeah, these symptoms are getting better. I'm like, great. Maybe you don't have to do it after a month. We'll just have to test it and see. Um, if you still feel that it's required, it's going to de depend on the, the individual, um, their level of commitment and their level of consistency. So there's a lot of factors involved in that, but that's a phenomenal question. So thank you for asking that. Should I stop birth control while doing the detox? Um, I can't legally tell you to stop doing really anything um, with your prescription meds. Uh, you can talk to your medical doctor. I'm not a huge fan of the birth control pill. I think that there's a lot of more effective ways to be able to um, address uh, conception. And I say that because of the fact that uh, the birth control pill also uh, takes, um, your thyroid takes a hit when you take uh, the birth control. Uh, the birth control doesn't directly give you candida. But because of all the hormonal fluctuations, it can indirectly um, increase your chances of getting it. So um, just some important things to, to understand. And even from a Chinese medical perspective, um, they look at the birth control pill as this pill that freezes the palace of the child or the, the baby's palace, which is what they call the uterus. It's quite poetic. So it, the birth control pill freezes the baby palace. 
And um, by doing so, it makes that region cold. And I know that that sounds really weird and abstract, but essentially candida or dampness can arise in Chinese medicine, they believe, off when women are taking the birth control pill. So other factors to really understand, um, higher incidence rates of blood clots, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just not something I, I really love. Um, okay. Brie, is there a correlation between tinea versicular and candida? My fiance struggles with getting white, dry, and itchy spots during the summer. Yeah, so tinea versicular is definitely a fungal issue. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, it's when, um, say, for example, if you're tanned, you'll see all these, like, little white spots all over. And um, quite often, there's some people who will say it's systemic candida that comes up and you see that on your body. That is a potential theory. The other theory is that it could also be something that happened topically. So some people get it from tanning beds because they're laying um, on an area that other people laid on. Um, there's multiple reasons for it. But I would suggest if your husband does have it, uh, I would look at other symptoms, other digestive symptoms to see if there is any sort of candida that is a baseline uh, that's happening. If uh, for the topical, uh, I would suggest actually getting some neem, N as in Nancy, E E M as in Melissa. It smells like shit, not gonna lie. But this soap is really good for antifungal type issues um, or fungal type issues. Kim, wow, all the puzzle pieces to my health decline are becoming extremely clear to me these days. It's as if I can almost map it from just before high school now. Thank you so much, Melissa. I love the fact that you give it straight to us. I'm so glad you like it because um, I'm not changing anytime soon. <laughs> Does Kim to present itself as red rashes around the mouth or nose? Very potentially, absolutely. Um, another thing from a, uh, and we are going to wrap this up because I'm just battling on about symptoms, but... Another thing that I, I definitely uh, had mentioned in the master class that I want to give be able to recap here are skin issues. So uh, redness around the mouth for sure. Melasma. A lot of women get that, uh, especially after the, the birth of a child. Um, if there's, it's actually associated with high uh, levels of estrogen and liver dysfunction. So if you have melasma, uh, those patches, it could be even around the mouth, around the chin, this discoloration. Uh, psoriasis, eczema. Never seen one case that did not involve the liver or any uh, unregulated growth of candida. So uh, really, really, really important to be able to address that. Um, acne, 1,000%, 1,000%. If your elimination organ is your skin, um, ask anybody in my family. I, I struggled with uh, skin issues. And it wasn't until I really cleaned up my digestion, which you can do with the liver and candida detox. I'm just going to throw this up uh, here again for you guys. Um, Again, price is going up at 11 p.m. tonight. So if you want to get in on this, this is literally for a two-month plan that has group support. You ain't getting this if you saw somebody privately. You wouldn't even get this if you saw me privately. So it's a really freaking good deal. Um, can candida cause upper eyelid puffiness? Well, you know what's interesting about that is, yes, it can because, so the eyes are actually associated with the liver in Chinese medicine, but then if they look at it from a microcosm, so if they actually, like, if they zoomed in to the eye, they would be able to, uh, Chinese medicine, my textbooks and everything, would tell you that especially the upper eyelid, it all has to do with, like, the spleen, which governs digestion. Uh, don't take it as actuality, like, your spleen. Uh, I'm saying this from a more abstract perspective in Chinese medicine, but it definitely can um, be a huge result of candida. Absolutely. I get canker sores. Could it be liver? Um, canker sores, you know what? I would say digestion in the sense that your immune function is taking a hit. So I would look at canker sores and go immune function for sure, which is a result of poor digestion. Could you do an SFT episode about contraception, contraception options and one including your thoughts on progesterone supplements for PCOS, please? Um, I definitely can. There's so many uh, topics I would love to talk about that I will be bringing forth. So guys, I want to wrap this up. I know I've been babbling for a little bit longer than I wanted to. I try to keep these uh, sort of uh, live streams to like 40 minutes and this has gone on to like 51. <laughs> but uh, I do want it, I want to be able to pop on tonight. Um, tell you guys a little bit about supplements, tell you guys a little bit about food, uh, the liver connection, estrogen, which is just freaking mind-blowing. 
Um, so any of you ladies who have any estrogen related symptoms, adenomyosis, endo, fibroids, cysts, PCOS, fibrocystic breast, any of those types of conditions, remember, remember this, all of them, all of them have an underbelly root cause of liver dysfunction, all of them. Because if you were conjugating your estrogens properly, that would be one of the reasons why that you, you actually be okay. But the problem is, is that if that is, if that detoxification method isn't happening, you're not detoxing those hormones out. If your bowels are not moving, you're not eliminating a lot of those estrogens. So it's really important to understand that. Uh, thank you, Melissa, for all you do for us. My pleasure. So guys, I really, really hope that if you are sitting on the fence and going, I don't know, should I do this detox? Like, I don't know. 197 is a pretty darn good deal, uh, giving it's two months. Uh, this program is actually valued uh, about 400, probably even more, because I'm going to be there like dig -a -dig -a -dig, talking and chatting uh, quite a bit. Um, and we also have a resident nutritionist that's going to be in that group as well. So I just want to throw it out there that if you're sitting on the fence, it's a pretty dangerous place to sit and see what happens to Humpty Dumpty. Get off the fence. Come join us. 11 p.m. tonight. The price is going up. So get on it now. All right. Guys, if you love this episode, please make sure you give tons of hearts. Um, feel free to share it because people can check out the replay as well. And if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for staying to this length. I love you tons, and I hope you guys can join me for the liver and candida detox that's going on right now. Have a good night.